Overnight line movers, Teddy. It's never too early to talk Final Four, and it's never too early to go to sportsbookreview.com and sbrodds.com. These lines are changing. Yes, the lines came out yesterday. We're already digesting them. Let's take a look here for Teddy in the Final Four. Michigan State opens up a minus two and a half favorite, comes in at three now, bouncing back and forth between those two and a half and three point numbers. Total at 132 and a half. Money line split plus 140, minus 160. Texas Tech, number one overall defensive team based on kenpom.com defensive metrics. But Michigan State, been there, done that, tried and tested, great head coach, playing in a dome atmosphere, Teddy. We'll get rolling on this Final Four right away here on a Monday. Yeah, I'm surprised this total's as high as it is. You know, buck 32 and a half. Texas Tech wasn't catching a whole lot of overs in the first uh, few mm-hmm. rounds. Uh, Sparty has the offensive capability, but when we think about Michigan State, they're a defensive team. And when we look at this point spread, there's some history involved in this point spread. Izzo and the Spartans as the having been there, done that factor. I think that came into play uh, a little bit in this point. But Texas Tech just doesn't have the same national recognition. Chris Beard as a head coach doesn't have that same national recognition as Tom Izzo. And that's factored in this number. But boy, you look at the statistical profiles of these two teams. This line's, I'll tell you this, this line's not going any higher than three. And we've already seen the three that got bet up to three right off the bat. And the sharper books are already back down to two and a half. So it's telling me, The wise guys are going to like the dog in this one. You don't need to be in a rush if you want to lay with Michigan State. In fact, if you like Texas Tech, I grab the three sooner rather than later. Taking a look at a little bit of baseball action. Those Miami Marlins getting a little bit of love on Monday morning. Mets opens as high. Teddy is minus 150 now drawing back. If we take a look at some offshore books right now, Chris, minus 136 plus 123 split. Inner tops minus 134 plus 124. Mets and Marlins heading in total of seven and a half in this one, Teddy. And the interesting thing about the Marlins, Teddy, they do have two wins on the season. And that's about the average of what they're drawing per game as well. <laughs> yeah, no, no. I think the average is about three and a half fans. Uh, yeah, so the two game, go. but I mean, break up Miami, the worst team in baseball has got a two game winning streak and they have Caleb Smith on the mound today. And Caleb Smith is someone who the betting markets seem to be very, very interested in. He hasn't pitched in the majors since last June. He needed so uh, shoulder surgery in the middle of his rookie year. But at the time that he got hurt, he led the national league rookies in strikeouts at 88 in 77, a point one innings. The overall numbers weren't insane, but weren't, you know, uh, these bet, 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 bet on numbers. But <laughs> it was very much, when you look at Caleb Smith, this is a prospect that the market seemed to like right now. As for Steven Matz, well, uh, I mean, he had a career high in starts last year, career high in innings last year. He also had a pretty lousy spring, 7.47 ERA. So I can understand why at least a little bit of money is flowing towards the Marlins in early betting action on Monday morning. Teddy, the king is on the mound in Seattle, but that doesn't really draw too much attention anymore. Also, the total opened up at eight and a half, now sits at nine. And we took a look punching up the script. The Mariners were actually drawing basically a pick em, now getting money in this one, Teddy. The Angels are coming to town, minus 116, plus 105 splits across the board. King Felix was one, one time where you said, you know what? He's at home. He's going to have double-digit strikeouts. He's going to dominate. Not the same Mariners team, not the same pitcher on the mound here now, Teddy. No, you want know, the, the Mariners are making everybody money though right now. It was all oh, the Mariners are any good this year. They're not any good this year. Maybe they're not any good, but they just uh, had a good series against Boston uh, on the heels of uh, winning a couple games against the A's in Tokyo uh, earlier in the campaign. Nobody in the major leagues has more wins than the Marlins do. Uh, the Mariners do uh, right now, but of course we are talking about King Felix here, who went eight and fourteen last year, a career worst five point five ERA, but it's worse than that. His last victory came at the end of June. The final three months of the campaign, 0-8 with an ERA above six during that span. Spring training, did he show signs of turning it around? No. 15.95 ERA in spring training. This is the guy who's been the number one starter, number one starter, number one starter. Well, now he's a number five starter. (laughs) You know, uh, Scott Survey saying, you know, uh, I just think where we're at right now organizationally, where he's at, he wants to have a big year, and all this does is give him more time to prepare for his first regular season start. Yeah, market's not high on King Felix <laughs> by any stretch uh, of the imagination. Of course, the Mariners 5-1 and one to the over, 4-0 and oh in the four games on their home field thus far. Hence, the over money in early betting action today. 